Amway President Rich DeVos is an expert sailor as well as an expert salesman. Here in his Four Winds talk, he tells Amway distributors how to handle the tricky winds of discouragement. The icy blasts from persons who don't understand Amway or the lulling warm breezes that whisper, do it tomorrow. Those winds still prevail today, much the same as when Rich and Jay Van Andel started a business together in 1949, selling Neutralite food supplements. We signed up in August 29, 1949. We bought two boxes of double X, a sales kit, and a few sales books to pass out to people, and we were launched into this business. Like some of you, however, we bought the kit and we bought the Neutralite and we said, oh, well, if you can't sell it, you can eat it. And we started selling Neutralite food supplement. We didn't do much with Neutralite for that first little bit. We talked to a few people about it and they discouraged us severely in what we were attempting to do. I know you've never had that type of thing, but <laughs> we had some people. We pursued, nevertheless, and we did go to that meeting. And on the way home from that meeting, we made a commitment that we were going to get on with this thing and see what we could do with it. We decided it had some excitement to it, some potential to it, but like some of you, it was unknown. And I tried to sit there tonight and recall that meeting and how much I wanted to believe that what that fellow, the president of that company, was telling us was true. I wasn't very sure, but I really did hope he was telling it to me straight. And I hoped that that plan would work and that we could get on with it. But like some of you also, that hope was filled with a certain amount of doubt. But we decided when we left that meeting to see what we could do with this business. And we started from that point on, and we were full-time in the business, and we gave it everything we had, and we've been doing that ever since. And looking back at all of that, of course, we see all of the problems that we encountered along the way, all of the things that some of you will encounter or have encountered. We've looked at all the times we might have quit or we might have let somebody talk us out of it. And a few years later, I developed a talk which I called The Four Winds. And in looking at that talk the other day, it struck me that that talk is as appropriate today as it was when I gave it years ago. Some of the same reasons for quitting prevail as they did then. The four winds deal with the various aspects of the winds that blow. Later this fall, we will see ships out in Long Island Sound in the America's Cup race pitted against either Australia or France, whoever wins that one. The winner of that race will be those people who know how to take the various winds and use them to their advantage. And the loser of the race will be the ones who allow the winds to defeat them or are unable to use the winds quite as effectively to move them towards their goal. Because, you see, the winds always blow and they come from various directions. But no matter where the wind comes from, if you know how to handle the wind and you know how to run a sailboat, you can use that wind to get you there. If the wind is dead on your nose in a sailboat, you tack at 30 or 40 degrees angles off and from that wind and you keep working towards your goal. When the wind is dead on, you can't go directly to your goal. But if you know where your goal is, you won't let that wind deprive you of arriving. It will merely mean you take a different routing and you plot a different course. But yet, as we've watched these winds through the years from various directions, and I've watched thousands of people come into Amway, some people allow the winds to control them because perhaps they never understood that no matter where it comes from, they can use the wind. You and I don't control the wind because winds blow from all directions, but we are able to use the wind if we understand some of those fundamental principles. Many of you, like I say, have come for the first time. You hope you can believe this thing. You think maybe it could happen to you. But the fact of the matter is, when you leave here tomorrow, you'll get that first cold blast. 
from some well-meaning friend or fellow worker who will look at you and say, hey, did you watch television last night? You say, no. And he says, why not? You always watch television on Wednesday nights. Well, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't. Well, where were you? You know, you always got some guy you work with who's got a lot of mouth, you know, and he, he's all right, haven't you? It's always somebody who's got to start pumping. You say, well, I, uh, I went to, uh, I was in Phoenix last night. You say, well, what were you doing in Phoenix? Well, I, oh, I, I just, a friend of mine wanted to go to a meeting and I drove in there. <laughs> and now he's curious, what kind of a meeting did you go to? He says, well, it was, uh, oh, uh, it was an Amway meeting. He says, oh, not that. He says, I was in that 10 years ago. I knew that would never last. I suppose DeVos was here giving you a big speech again, and you fell for it. And you say, well, uh, he talked a lot, and he's got a pretty big mouth, but uh, I, I, I didn't sign up. I, you know, I, I, I just went because his friend wanted to go. Now, when you left here this evening, you really were kind of interested. And you really figured that 1,500 people couldn't be all goofy. <laughs> Many of whom are already in the business, believing in it. And yet, you see, one person who doesn't really understand the business will say a few things to you that he doesn't think it's any good, and some of you wilt in front of that little draft. Now we call that, of course, the north wind. And if you don't know how to handle the north wind, it will drive you into cover. And yet I can recount for you all of those little winds that you're going to encounter. And if you're new in the business, I just want to prepare you for them a little bit. Because you see, the world is filled with people who tell people what they cannot do. We live in a unique time in history when the critic has become a greater favorite than the performer. The age when the man who finds fault with the production or the effort of another person becomes greater and better known because he found fault with it than the man who created the product in the first place. And so there are many detractors of all performers today. Be that in business, in politics, in medicine. There is a great chorus of people who will tell you that it could not be done. And they will always be there. Now I spend a little time on this because tonight when you leave, you really do want to believe that this thing could touch your life and give you some new hope. You came here kind of hoping for that. And so I want to warn you against that north wind that will hit you tomorrow when some well-meaning friend or co-worker tells you that he doesn't think it will last. Now, you're going to have to decide. Either you're going to believe him or you're going to believe me. Now, I've been at this 25 years and I say it will last. Neutralite has been at it for 40 years and it continues to last and grow. But your old friend Harry, who knows from nothing about this business or this form of distribution, if you're not careful, will give you a crick in the neck and cause you to go in hiding because he gave you a cold blast and put some doubt in your mind. Who are you going to listen to? Harry? The sponsor who brought you here? Or are you going to listen to me? That's a choice you'll make. And I'm trying to give you some warm, soothing winds and some comfort to reassure you that those kind of words have been spoken by millions upon millions of people to hundreds of thousands of Amway distributors, many of whom they destroyed by their idle chatter. Now, once they get off saying this system will never last, you will quickly move over to those people who say, well, it might last, but they will then begin to discredit you. That could be a well-intentioned husband, or a wife, or a mother-in-law, or a mother, or anyone who you work with or who may be close to you. Not because they mean to be vicious, 
But as I watch people move through life making decisions, I find most people have never made decisions. Would you believe that? They have wiggled and wormed and moved depending on what their friends said all the time. And one day they said, I'd like a new Ford. And somebody said, oh, you wouldn't want one of those. They overheat in Arizona. <laughs> so you said, no, I guess they won't buy a Ford. Well, then you think, well, I'll buy a Chevy. And somebody said, oh, I'll tell you, those things rust even out here in Arizona. <laughs> so you say, well, I don't want that. So you end up buying a Cadillac or some silly old thing like that. <laughs> But think about it for a moment. How many times haven't you been swayed by what every Tom, Dick, and Harry comes along and says to you? And that's true of people. And therefore, a lot of people will look at you, not out of viciousness, but they'll look to say, you mean you, you really got into that soap-selling thing? And you say, well, you know, I, it was, well, you know why not? Uh, you know, it's just a little thing I do. I talked to a cab driver today. He sells for a competitor of ours. And I said, don't tell me you settled for a second-rate outfit. <laughs> and if you're going to be in it, go first class. And he said, well, he said, I don't do much with it. <laughs> It was a perfect story. It's just a little something I do on the side, but I don't do much with it. See? So I gave him a little cold north wind. <laughs> and he began to crumble right in front of me. He did, see? And he started to say, oh, it doesn't amount to much. It's just something my wife got me into. Okay. Isn't that the way we operate? And instead of leaving here and saying, man, I've gone to the most dynamic, exciting meeting you've ever seen. I was with 1,500 people who have determined they can make a better life for themselves, and I'm going to be a part of it. Somebody says, what makes you think you can sell? And you say, I don't know. <laughs> huh? You think, you know, last night I thought I could. <laughs> Today I don't think I can. Because this expert brother in law of yours, who's been a plumber's helper for 50 years, says he doesn't think you can. <laughs> now, but it's, it's, you know, I'm just, we're having a little fun. And the reason we're laughing is because they come too close to home always, don't they? <laughs> See? Because we are moved, and we are all moved by things like that. But even more negatively, when somebody says, you can't do that, you've never sold in your life. You say, that's right, I never have. Hey, I came to tell you, I don't care. It don't make any difference whether you've ever sold in your life. It might be an advantage if you've never sold anything in your life. But you do use soap, don't you? <laughs> and most of you, from what I smell from where I am now, obviously believe in it and use it on a regular basis. You don't really have to be a swinging soap salesman to make it in Amway. You just got to say, Nelly, do you need any soap today? <laughs> and she says, yep. So for those of you that are worried about that north wind, and you're going to hear that north wind, I only reassure you that it just don't cut any ice. You know, most of you never walked before you started walking either. But you didn't say, I can't walk, I've never walked. You said, I can't drive, I've never driven. Of course not. But you can learn how to do anything you decide you really want to do. So I want you to remember your nice, well-meaning, but confused friends when they give you some of those nice cold wind. Now, once you get over the idea that maybe you just might be able to convince somebody that you could tell them about a little soap, 
The next thing you've got to do is overcome the problem of people. Say, well, I'm sure you can sell, but why don't you get into a legitimate business? I mean, sell them soap. I mean, how low can you get? Why don't you sell some big... Why don't you sell cars or real estate? Well, the only thing I, I know, there's a lot of good big things to sell. And they're, it's good to see. Nothing wrong with selling real estate or stocks and bonds. Or, we sell soap because people use soap. And they use it every day, and they use it up. And that's important, because then they got to buy some more tomorrow. And that's why I sell soap, and that's why somebody said, don't tell me you're in the soap business. I said, man, there's no better business in all the world. Because I'm in a consumable product line where people use it every day, and I can sell it over and over to a great group of customers, and I develop a big-term repeat business. And so we're in a multi-billion dollar market that customers can be developed in. Well, you know, once you get over some of those things and you, you finally do get in Amway and you, you, you shun yourself from that cold wind and you start avoiding some of those people who would talk you out of it before you ever start and you go on out and you mumble a few words that you're in Amway and they don't blow you out of your saddle and you finally get somebody who buys a bottle of LOC from you and you're launched. You got one customer. You know, that's a great thing. Because everybody said you couldn't sell. And you did. You didn't sell a lot. But you sold something. And you know, you'll never know what you can do in this business until you do that much. And when you do, you'll discover the dimensions of your capability. Because when you can sell one, you can sell a hundred. All you do is do it over and over again. And you'll discover that same excitement when you recruit your first distributor. And you'll discover that same excitement someday when you stand on this stage and accept an award like you could do a year from today. You heard a young man up here said five months ago he listened. I could promise you that a year from today, if you will make a commitment, if Jay or I or somebody else is in this town for a meeting like this or your own meeting, you can be on this stage as a direct distributor. Now, some of you don't dare believe that that's... I'm telling you, that's a real possibility if you'll believe and make those first simple steps and stop letting these other people run your life and scare you out of everything. Because you've got people say, oh, you don't have the education. You don't have the aptitude. If you'd only married this girl instead of that girl. If you'd only had more money, if you'd come from that family instead of this family. If you're only white instead of blue. Right? The world is filled with cold, chilling winds of people who tell you it can't be done. We are here tonight to tell you it can be done and you can do it if you won't let this north wind scare you off. When I wrote this talk, our country was in economic recession. And there were people who then said, well, this isn't the right time because you're not sure what's going to happen. Well, you know, there is no other time. You realize that, don't you? There is no right time. There is no perfect time for you. There is only now. There is only that one magic moment when people take it and run with it. And if you don't take it when the magic moment comes, you will not even be able to recognize it when it comes your way once again. For many of you in this room, there is only now. There will not be necessarily a greater moment. Because the years will go and your, your, your pessimism will grow and your doubts will linger. And there is a moment when you discover your potential and the ability to do it when you pick it up and run with it. And I can only tell you that every time I listen to the farmers tell me about how bad their crop is, i got to think back and last year I heard the same old story from a different set of farmers in a different part of the country. While at the same time somebody said, I'm not going to wait for the right time, I'm going to run with it now. There, I can say to you, in a recession is the greatest time to begin. Well, some of you would say, well, I don't know, things are low and steady right now. I, I better not try anything new because people aren't going to bother. Okay? And that's a reason for not going. 
But in a period of recession is when you need the most money, when more people will be seeking an opportunity than other times. And it's therefore the best times. But I only can say to you, there is no other time for most of you. And there is this time. And if you'll use this time well, things will happen for you in a great way. Now, I have lived, and Jay and some of the others in this room, some of the old neutralite people have been in this business for longer than we have. But for years, I've watched the ups and downs. I've watched a parade of competitive companies come along and give us problems. I've watched shortages of products and abundance of products. And I only know this, that once you make your commitment to do it, you keep on going regardless of conditions. And you learn that an east wind, which can bring unsettling conditions with it at any given moment, can drive you to your goal just as well as any other, once you learn how to trim your sails. And if you're running in an east wind, you run with your sails at reduced rates. You put the roller reefers in and you reduce the main and you go down to a working jib or a small jib up front so you're ready if the storm comes. If you're running across Lake Michigan in that kind of weather, you have your crew on the foredeck ready to lower the main when that storm hits. But all the time you're using that wind to move your to, a, to your goal, aware of the fact that you're ready to adjust to the times and tune your ship a little bit differently. And when you suddenly get a wind shift, you throw her on the other tack and you keep driving to your goal. And the men who win the races are the ones who never are worried by an east wind because they know how to handle an east wind because they've got an attitude that says, I will use that east wind to help me arrive and I'll adjust accordingly. And so I say, don't let the east wind scare you up. But if you're really trying to get someplace in the world of Amway and you've made a commitment that you want to do more with what you've got, then beware of a lulling southern wind that while you are ready to move ahead and you say, I'm going to do it now, you say, well, tomorrow. Manana, I'll get to that one. And if you ever watch the world, you'll find that the people who generally live in the tropics produce less than the people who live in the northern climes or the extreme southern climes. The people who live in the tropical zones because of warm weather are lulled. And the heat saps your strength. And you know that. And heat will sap your strength faster than cold weather will. It is an interesting phenomenon, isn't it, as you look at it, that it takes four to five times the energy to cool things as it does to heat things. To heat a house up north does not require the same amount of power it does to cool a house down south. The energy requirement is quite different. And so you must watch for those lulling things that come in from the south. You must watch for the things that, well, I'll, I'm going to go out and get myself 20 customers as soon as it cools down. Because you're back to a little east wind coming in on you. You're letting those south winds lull you into a more opportune time. A south wind is usually a light wind. And a sailboat, you know, and a light wind doesn't move. We call it dead in the water. A ship that's dead in the water is out of control. Some of you have gone in the Amway business, you've got a few customers, but you're not aggressively working at it. You say, yeah, I'm in Amway, and I'm going to get on with it. Uh, next year I'm going to make DD, maybe. And you haven't moved. A ship standing still, you can move the rudder all the way over. Nothing happens. Because a sailboat only has control when it's underway, when air is, water is moving by the ship and beyond the rudder that the ship is controlling. And therefore, if you want to sail your ship to your goal, the first requirement you have is to keep it in motion. On a sailboat, if you don't keep it in motion, we say you go into irons. That means you're locked by the wind and out of control and you can be thrown on the rocks and destroyed. And I've seen boats have that happen to them because the wind is blowing by their sails and it flutters on by them and it carries them downwind and can bring them to whatever destiny it's going to end up on. All because the man steering the ship didn't keep it under motion. He went dead in the water. And if you've been in Amway a while and you've stopped growing and you've stopped working at it, you're dead in the water. 
And the south wind, once you get dead in the water, will throw you on the rocks and put you out of business. You can think of all sorts of reasons why the plan was wrong, the products were wrong, and all the rest of it. And I'm going to tell you what's wrong. You didn't keep your ship moving until you had it under control. A ship moving forward has the power to get there and the control to make it to its destiny and to adjust to all the other winds as they come along. A ship dead in the water can't even adjust for a storm that hits it. It's at the mercy of the sea and at the mercy of the wind. And so I say, keep your ship moving lest you get caught in a south wind which could destroy it. Well, you know, the final wind down our way, it shifts back into the westerly regions. And it carries us beautifully. It's a moderate wind. You know it's always going to be 15 to 20. It's a good steady breeze. You can put full sail on her. She'll heel good and she'll drive out across the sea or like When you've got a westerly going with you, man, you can move more directly towards your goal if you're moving off in that direction. But the main thing is it's a steady breeze, and you can count on it. You can be assured that in the middle of the night it's not going to reverse on you, knock you down, or blow somebody overboard. And so you can set those sails and make your best time and work your tacks because you can count on certain things, a steady westerly. Well, let me give you some of the steady westerly things you'll encounter in the world of Amway. For all those people who tell you it can't be done, the steady westerly should keep saying to you as it sings through your rigging and the wind keeps coming, there must be something to it. There must be something to it. And so for all those other winds you encounter, you've got to see it. There's got to be something to it. There's got to be something to it. And so let that wind hum in you and encourage you as you go along. We figure at least a million people read the Amagram every month. That's a tremendous organization. And so while you sometimes feel alone and question your ability, then let that warm westerly pick you up again and remind you that if they can be doing it, you can be doing it. If all those are in it, you ought to be in it. There's got to be some of those friends of yours you can acquaint with Amway who will come into it. And so that will give you assurance from that steadying breeze. Just think of that. The Amway plant has no customers but you. All of those buildings, the center of free enterprise, the whole concept of Amway is for you. Well, we could go on and talk about lines of products that are available to you. You could talk about Neutralite food supplement for hours all by itself. As I said to you earlier, Jay and I have been eating Neutralite. Our children were brought up on it. We've been consuming this product for all these years. We believe in it totally. And you should use it and discover for yourself the excitement of food supplementation. Attend the meetings your sponsors put on for you. Go to the rallies in your community because they're more of that wind to lift you up. Even though you got your collar up from that last northern blast you got and even though you're a little shaky about that last knockdown you took from the east wind, and even though you're a little discouraged because that good sister-in-law you just signed up just quit again. <laughs> See? And you go to that meeting and say, oh, shoot. If you only lost one relative, you haven't even got into it yet. <laughs> then you look around the business, you see the family inputs into this business and all the people involved. Then think about the training program. The fact that you've got a sales kit that'll give it all to you if you never did go to a meeting, if you never saw your sponsor again. That got to be a lulling breeze. You go home and start to read the manual. You start to discover the dimensions in the world. The manual and the literature can be a westerly breeze of reassurance for anybody who will pick it up and page through it to give you that reassurance. Well, those are all the things that come out of a westerly wind. And when you get all through with that, you think of all the people you know who are in it and who are doing well. I run down the crown list every once in a while. You know, I think of Charlie and Elsie. He, he was an $80 a week cop in New York. And he started in Amway. I was in there. I, he, first meeting I ever made, he came to me to file a complaint. <laughs> it was a rally. And he'd come in to register a major complaint with me. He didn't like his sponsor. And he wanted a transfer. And I said, you can stay with him or you can quit. That's your option. But you aren't going to get the transfer from me. So he sat in the meeting. Like this one. He had to leave at the intermission because he had to go home and serve on the police force. He had to walk his beat. And he came up front, we shook hands, said, I enjoyed talking to you. He says, I'm going to go home and you will hear from me. And we sure did. 
because he made a commitment that he was going to make it happen. And that's exactly what you have to do. You have to make a commitment to this business. You can't just sit there and take all these winds and let them blow you around you because then you just blow with the winds. You have got to decide to get a hold of the rudder and use those winds to take you where you want to go rather than run at the mercy of them. Art Mallet Charlton came right out of Phoenix, Arizona. Somebody signed them up in an ice cream stand. And they went back east and made direct because they determined at one point in their time that they were going to make it happen. Dick and Bunny Marks, I was in their home in Winnipeg one wintry cold night. Right after they got in this business and we discussed it and they were had some grumbles about SA8 and a few things, but we hashed it out till one or two in the morning and they said, we're going to go do it. Today, of course, they live in Minnesota and they are Crown Directs. Gordy Ross, who came out of Canada and operates up in Vancouver primarily and up through that area, lives in California part of the time. Another young man of determination made up his mind. Any of these people any better than you? Not a wit. Any smarter than you? Not a bit. But they were people who were able to make up their mind, get a hold of the tiller, and then decide to go to the goal. And if you will make that commitment, you will do the same thing. When Dan and Bunny Williams came in the business, we had a little meeting down there in Louisiana with them at that time. I remember a little breakfast meeting I flew into, and they were really just getting going. And then one day they made a commitment to go all the way in this business, and they soon became crowns. And Jim and Sharon Jantz from Canada also made that kind of a commitment. They just decided to get the winds under their control instead of allowing the winds to control them. And so I would encourage you tonight. I would do more than encourage you. I would tell you to get on with it. And stop being kicked around by people who've never done it. Stop being led by people who can't make up their own minds, but it can only knock other people who do. And determine for yourself that your ship is going to come in. And you're going to use the winds that blow in the world of Amway to drive you and help you get to your goal. And the best news I can give you is that no matter where the winds come from, you have within you the capability of getting to those goals. And when people say, I'm going to get on with it and determine to, without doubt, to make the goal, everything else kind of falls in place. People who you couldn't recruit yesterday stand up and say, when can I get in today? They do. They suddenly know you got it. You believe it. You're going and they want to get on your ship and sail with you. And that's the magic I bring to United of what you can do. When you use the four winds and harness them to move your ship to the kind of dreams you've always dared have. This is a copyrighted program of Amway Corporation, Ada, Michigan, USA. Unauthorized duplication is prohibited.